I want to come up with open source ecology is asking for people to think outside of the mode of buying something shiny and perfect on Amazon and just setting it out on your counter and having it right we're at we're inviting people to something different than that and that's got to be part of it but everybody's spoiled by the experience they get buying something on Amazon and having it arrive shiny and putting it onto their counter so there's got to be I, I don't uh None of it's intended to be a complaint, but rather these are the things that I'm seeing that I know we need to do on the product development side in order to make this competitive enough to make a big impact and really start to spread with some more speed, you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. I think I've been watching a lot of 3D printer review videos on YouTube as a way to research how they're talked about and what 3D printer buyers are looking for. Yeah. Um, and so going through this kit, I'm imagining myself as one of those YouTube reviewers. What am I commenting on so far on the build process, you know? What's, uh, what do you get out of what, how are people talking about 3D printers? There is... A lot of diversity in the market um, and I'm right now what I'm trying to do is figure out where 3d printers are discussed outside of the hobbyist community so to speak um, there are a lot of people on YouTube who Can't hear you. There we go. Better? Okay. Yep. Hey, Josh. Hey, Josh. Joe, have you found a place where the people who talk about professional, th more, more production printers talk? Where are they? I'm still, I'm still looking for them. That's there a are a question. lot of the enthusiast guys on YouTube that talk about. You know, they'll be reviewing a 3D printer and they'll say, this is really good for these reasons, and they'll speak to some business points, but I don't know how much of their viewership are more enterprise-minded individuals, you know? And we need both. Like, we need the hobbyist maker to be a big part of this, too, absolutely. But with the part of this that I'm really focused on, the, the enterprise guys are going to be kind of my... the focus of my attention, you know, my primary focus. Um... Would you say you see some some enterprise discussion? What was the extent of it? Um, people talking about print speed and. Joe's popping off. Josh, uh, how are you doing there? Uh, pretty good. I uh. I have a list of 100 now of like podcasts. I'm just going through and trying to fill out like all the information on the other columns. Wow, we're gonna get on a hundred podcasts. I just got on yeah. one today. Uh, well, yeah, let's okay, see. How it, it, it went well. Did you do with uh, which podcast was that? This was Francisco from Agents of Innovation. Yeah, I mean, all mm -hmm. these things are great. Um, you know people who have different audiences and they're talking about exciting things and asking good questions i feel good about it it's good um yeah yeah i think it's really going to get you out there if we can really like even if we get half of these 100 that's going to be like a oh, lot yeah. of engagement so oh man if we get half of them that'll be good because because a lot of them are just kind of like non-responsive right 
Yeah, I think that's kind of expected. It's just like a number game. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think you're going to see it's a momentum game too. Uh, mm -hmm. Sorry about the disconnect, guys. The whole the whole valley's been having trouble with the internet lately. Um, but I think what you'll see is there's going to be something of a momentum game too. Some of the some of the bigger podcasts with huge reach, like NPR, I've been sort of saving because my intention, my hope, is that once we get 10 or 15 of these under our belts, then when we start pitching to new podcasts, we can say, here is a podcast that speaks to your same audience, and here's the conversation they had. You know, this was the listener feedback on previous appearances on podcasts. And so that gives us a lot more clout, well, I guess you could say, to, to chase after sort of the top shelf. So, yeah. you know, if we can get 10% to start, that gives us a whole lot of material to work back into that 90% that maybe didn't respond to us before. Uh, so the success rate will get better with time. Yeah. And I'm always asking uh, whenever I get on, what are some other suggestions today? The guy, uh, Francisco, suggested indie hackers. Those are people who are hacking their current job, as in like getting some small gig on a sideline. Uh, and they have a podcast, so I just put that in, uh, in a spreadsheet. Uh, there's also another, another suggestion was, uh, it's called Praxis or Star... Um, yeah, I, I got a link for this this other guy who does a podcast as well. Who um, people who are kind of like entrepreneurs who are switch, uh, kind of like looking for a gig or something like that. People who are training people to be entrepreneurial, like outside of the school system. Um, mm. Yeah, yeah, cool stuff, cool stuff. Every every time I get on, there's a good lead or two. I'll keep uh, mm. putting them in. Um, <coughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so to yeah, it's a good. Yeah, I mean, a lot of them are just really good. Um, it's exciting just to kind of, like, learn from the people as well. Like, the guy who on Tuesday was Jason Van Gumster, and he, he wrote, like, uh, he wrote the Blender for Dummies. I mean, that's cool. Cool people. So definite potential collaborators and people who have um, collaborative mindsets, too. Mm hmm very good um looking at so um how do we approach uh since there's a whole bunch bunch of them i mean kind of what are we doing because i did think it might be good to to kind of switch gears a little bit over into schools like universities with a very specific pitch and i was thinking just going crazy just do something crazy like a hydrogen car yay <laughs> <laughs> which if you break it down I mean so first of all it's kind of a crazy idea and, and we're gonna have to go through some feasibility but I think just getting that discussion and, and calling out for a crazy idea to, to be done I think is good there are definitely problems to to address in that problem statement but also uh, as we get the you know the teams wrapped into this we see who wants to collaborate there's enough material there that and overlaps on different topics like if we go with an ambitious project that this is bigger than any of us someone's gonna have to figure out every issue and I wanted to go at it from reverse engineering all the components so we wrap in the electric motor in it so there's electric motors that might be 3d printed um, I would say that it's uh, the focus is collaboration and, and like getting a lot of people to show up and to develop this um, I think just getting the ball rolling and, and kind of raising the bar on what a collaborative project could be could lead to some surprises. So I'd, I'm, I am thereby proposing the open source solar hydrogen car as the university project for all, uh, for all of the world. Um, do you think we can uh, get some people for that? <clears throat> yeah. I want to, I want to do, I want to do, I think we should, uh, I think we should work specifically on what we'll call pitch development. Make, uh, make something that can be presented 
make something that can be presented the way things are at universities, where we can send somebody, not necessarily a printed information packet, but a very tight, polished uh, website with exactly what we want the program to entail, maybe some videos from previous STEAM camps to give people a sense of how open source ecology thinks of itself. Um, but lay something together that is cohesive where it's all gathered up nicely and then farm that out to uh, schools of engineering or whatever the case may be that would be most interested in it. But <clears throat> I, think it's a, I think it's a brilliant idea. I think uh, carefully building up a pitch will be a big part of making it successful. Okay. Yeah, I think with this, it's going to be different than the podcast, too. It's not like customizing for school. It's kind of just introducing this one project or idea that Marson has, and each school can either decide to jump on or not. Mm -hmm. but yeah, that's something that would be very interesting right after this uh, podcast list. Um, tell me a little more about that. In terms of, uh, like, reaching out to them? Like, um you see this as you're referring to something like a catch-all that this could serve like a catch-all for a lot of different interests yeah i think i think joe was kind of talking about like having a web page with like all the ideas like put out onto this project kind of like how we have the uh the city building and like instead of customizing each pitch kind of toward uh the schools in the email you just really link them to this one page and they can read all about it and then like find an easier way for them to sign up I guess instead yeah. of like a yeah 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 um, I think the modular breakdown of the project lends itself to a lot of different interests and we should try to design it just like uh, if you guys have heard any of the recent work on extreme enterprise concept breaking down to many many roles because this this could be a lot of different roles there's people in video could participate in in marketing could participate like we we should pitch it as a hey this is something that we're going to develop and it's going to develop into a product at some point and catch a lot of interest with it and maybe there's like partial small partial prototypes that are almost there but but i think the scope of it so there's like on one side there's like housing right that's a big big project then there's like transportation cars i mean that's it's huge an amount of things that can we can collect in there in terms of the the breadth of that experience I think could be great um, okay so how do we go about this maybe we let's start by uh, let me share my screen maybe and um, let's start a little template um, let's let's write down some some notes on this make a copy um, so I think we should probably call it like university chapters so we want to think about how do we presents this present this all together but we gather around so let's um, get rid of all this stuff here well let me share this with you all this should be uh, let's see is this editable anyone on internet can find and edit let's edit this together done okay so let me paste this link Okay, get in there please, and then uh, first is the, did you guys take a look at the wiki page I sent? Where is the, uh, where is this chat? Uh, chat in the chat box. I don't see one. You don't see one? I only see the presentation, yeah. It's not popping up for you guys uh, in the chat box. Oh, no? oh, oh, yeah, yeah, no, the presentation, the, the, the get in there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Get, get right in there. And then um, where's the hydrogen page? 
um, solar. What happened to it? Um, oh, Extreme U. You guys, what do you think of that name? Think that could pass? Um, Extreme U, yeah. That's the name of this particular program, or yeah, Extreme U okay. Project. So I think that's kind of a quick, quick brand. We're Extreme. This is University. This is about you getting engaged. Uh, so you're participating at the university. Um, this would be like, what would be the vision for this? I, I'd like to see something. You guys ever hear of the Solar Challenge? No. I have not. Solar Challenge is, is where they race across Australia in solar electric cars. Um, let's see, is that the correct name? Solar Challenge, Solar Decathlon? Oh no, it's called the Solar Challenge. It's in Wikipedia. World Solar Challenge. Yeah, and I think it's school teams that participate primarily. Um, take a look at that. That's a pretty cool thing. So something of that nature. Now, there is a big difference for OSC compared to an effort like that. And the main thing we want to show is that... So take a look at a thing like a Solar Challenge. It's not collaborative. And we're solving for collaboration. Uh, so that's the first thing. Like we can turn heads by saying this is a collab. Extreme U is a collab. We start from the get-go. Absolutely collaborative effort. Um, what does that mean? It means that we divide and conquer. Not everybody's doing competing as teams. Everyone's working together. That's the big deal. Yeah, you're thinking like cross-campus schools are working together to like put together yeah. in the end like a hydrogen car. Yep. Yeah. So you can. Divide so you think? Yeah. Go ahead. Would you want the campuses to be kind of like close in like geographical sense? Nah. So that that maybe you could like meet up and work on it in that way too. It would be nice, but if you want global collaboration, I want global collaboration. We could have. Um, we could have an annual event. I want to see an annual event. So basically like Solar Challenge, there's an annual event. Culmination is where everybody gets together, whoever can make it. Uh, whoever can get sponsored or can find the resources to make it. And try to do it in some central location, probably like uh, middle of the United States. Hey, that's factory farm. Like like Missouri? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, you know, interestingly, we're in a geographical center of the country, just about. Um, but it would have to be a place where we culminate and we celebrate and we get everybody together. It's uh, think of it this way: that it could be even teams. One team builds the electric motor. One team builds an, the electrolyzer. One team builds an open source internal combustion engine wow we're talking like let's just split this into all these roles and go crazy that's that yeah. i think um because that event i mean all these kinds of events are are exciting but i mean to see this kind of a i think the head turning would be from the fact that this is collaborative and we're we're all putting our heads together to do something much bigger than any single team could do um, so the brand here, it's like, this is bigger than any single team, which from the get go, um, I mean, hopefully we understand it here, but I mean, it's part of the thing to, to explore if there's support for such an effort. And if there isn't, we're building the culture to make that such support or such a concept feasible. Along the way, we might find some things of why people resist that kind of idea that we're actually going to solve a bigger problem. Um, so it's good learning too. Uh, so, so solar challenge is, a, is a, as a 
I would call it a counterexample. Um, coll collaborate, not compete. You can break up the hydrogen car into many modules. I would like to see, uh, as we go along, formalization of OSD chapters at universities. Uh, I would like to see that there's a staff person that's involved and there's a, there's club members, but the staff person is going to be the permanent part. Like, if we could find a staff person, then they're around more than the students because students graduate. And we'd like to make this uh, like an annual effort. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just wondering, like, how uh, feasible is it to make, like, a solar hydrogen car? Or, like, how hard is it to make? Uh-huh. Uh, the ones have been made, like, for example, uh, let's look at... Actually, let's take a look at this OSC workshops. There was a post on this. In the 80s, a guy named Billings did that, uh, like right here, this comment here. Billings Corporation had a number of hydrogen powered vehicles in the 80s, including a US Post office delivery vehicle, a hydrogen bus operating in California and a Winnebago. A Peugeot was modified to run on hydrogen. Hydrogen was stored in tanks filled with granular alloy that absorbed hydrogen and gave it off when heated. In case of an accident, there, there would not be a Hindenburg event, but rather a broom would sweep up the spilled granules. Home was heated and cooled with hydrogen together with heating water, hydrogen gas range. A lawnmower for the home was powered by hydrogen, which was produced by an electrolyzer. It's hard to believe that this was 40 years ago and clean burning hydrogen is not mainstream. So uh, I think the general pattern is that te some technologies uh, take time to uh, roll out. A lot of people will talk about, like I guess Elon Musk will talk about that, oh, that's a hydrogen bomb. Well, uh, not exactly accurate way to say it because um, compressed hydrogen is a known technology. So part of this would be to make that case, like I think part of the, we're going to get this all the time and you already asked it, Josh, and that is uh, make the case, uh, so clarify the case for safety is one of the um, the starting points. Uh, I mean, there's different ways to do it. There's hydrogen, it's called... Um, what was it? What did they call it here? Absorb hydrogen granular alloy. It's called. That's called uh, metal hydride storage. Or you could do compressed hydrogen. Uh, so what I like you guys to do, I think I have to convince you two guys first. Um, but if you look on YouTube. You'll see that, um, like, they do tests of, okay, what happens if you blow up a, a, a tank of stored hydrogen? It's it's okay if, if you're not storing hydrogen and oxygen mixed, because that's an explosive mixture. If it's only hydrogen, you need oxygen for it to burn. So if you, like, explode it or shoot a bullet through it, it'll kind of, like, fizz out. <laughs> Just, like, blow out real fast and have a have a flame not too bad comparable to gasoline like gasoline is probably more dangerous in that kind of a situation because the hydrogen will just leak out very mm -hmm. quickly because it's lighter than air and it won't explode because it it uh, it needs oxygen to explode if you, it needs at least four percent oxygen if you have a plain tank of it it doesn't but i think there's that to be made as a case and we don't know if if we go with compressed hydrogen would uh, would anyone do that like would people at universities be okay with it well there's people who do research on that but maybe we'll find that that's kind of hard for somebody uh, to allow that at their university uh, we'll have to do some research on it if that mm -hmm. is not doable then we have to go to the other technologies like like metal hydride storage which is safe like it is basically metal ab absorbed in into into well, hydrogen absorbed into metal, basically metal mesh or metal metal powder, um, and that actually works reasonably. The easiest, the lowest brow thing, just 
technically speaking is you're taking water you're breaking it apart with an electrolyzer and then you're storing it like with scuba gas tank compressors like that's that's a technology that's very well known uh, mm -hmm. that's like 2,000 to 5,000 psi but for the hydrogen tanks uh, you can go like 5,000 psi or 10,000 psi uh, the pumps there might be more expensive but I know there's people there's people that have done this and have experimented with this and uh, I think a lot of times people just so you understand this a lot of times people are stuck on the concept of like you didn't hear me say fuel cell I'm not calling for fuel cells because they're they're really expensive like ridiculous expensive now fuel cells are more efficient they're like 60 percent efficient i'm just mm -hmm. saying here hey we're just going to burn this thing because it's going to be a hundred times better than burning gasoline for the pollution you know so we're, yeah. we're we're dumbing down the technology to combustion but using an advanced fuel and that's a that's a good idea it is a good idea i don't think you can argue that like a lot of but a lot of people of course in the industry they will say oh well uh you need fuel cells well you don't they're more efficient but if you can generate hydrogen efficiently through like pv which is very cheap these days uh the case for solar hydrogen is very strong uh, and here at, at this house that i'm in right now we have pv for like if you buy pv panels you can go through the math actually I'll show you the link the open source PV system because you, you gotta understand that you can do PV at two cents per kilowatt hour if that makes any sense to you if it doesn't mm -hmm. you can study it but you can do that and current grid rate is 10 cents per kilowatt hour for electricity from a power plant you can do solar if you know how to do it according to the open source PV system uh, which I'll send you an open source PV system. This is actually um, quite important. But I mean, I don't think many people know about this. Uh, I think because we don't have a lot of technical literacy on this at this level. And of course, the industry is going to say this is not possible because it's not an interest of a lot of industries to let this cat out of the bag. Um, so take a look at cost of electricity production. I'm going to link that. And it's an interesting point for anybody to, to to dispute these terms there, but this is our data from our place right here. Uh, so let's put that in. Um, so we can, in this process, clarify the case for cost effectiveness of solar hydrogen. Uh, so we're getting at factory farm we're getting two cent per kilowatt hour cost of PV electricity. And I'm gonna link, oh yeah, you're gonna link to it? Am I linking to it? Yeah, I'm gonna link to it. That's that. Which means that if you're like, say somebody argues with you and they say, hey, uh, you know, it's like, that's crazy you're gonna burn hydrogen in an engine you need fuel cells well if your cost of producing the hydrogen is lower and in fact five times lower than the fact that a um, internal combustion engine at 20 percent is one-third the efficiency of a fuel cell at 60 percent uh, does not matter you still come out ahead so I mean you can argue this in many ways but there's a good case that you can say that this actually makes sense and this could dis therefore hydrogen energy could be this distributed across the world today I mean this is it's a it's a big idea and of course you're gonna get a lot of resistance and probably um, mm -hmm. my opinion you probably get a lot of resistance on well no I'm not gonna even say that I think with this hydrogen storage in approved containers that are rated for 10,000 psi or 5,000 psi I think that might be the way to go and those those are affordable they don't break the bank on they're gonna be like a thousand bucks um, but that technology all exists and then it's a case for developing these high pressure vessels um, more of them and low cost yep um, I want to link to this 
message right here where Randy piped up in that discussion there. Um, oh yeah, I was just looking at that on Facebook. Yep. Um, yeah, I think I don't know too much about like the uh, the energy side and all that, but if it's doable, then it really just comes down to like the pitch for the college is because I think there's a lot of talent out there with students. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, and it's just also like a lot of the logistics. Like, do you want to reach out to uh, like grad school students because they're the type of people that will have a lot of knowledge with what they're doing and be able to do it like efficiently. Everybody. But it's harder to get them like as engaged as undergrad students. Right. All of them. We know that there's like the Solar Decathlon or Solar Challenge. Those things exist yeah. at the university level. Grad students may be focused on certain projects, but what if, what if there's grad students working on exactly this topic, right? There's probably going to be, yeah. I mean, across the world, you're going to find people. I mean, hydrogen, let's see, active research, let's see, active research, active research on hydrogen. I mean, you're going to, I mean, there's journals devoted to it. There's tons of it going on everywhere. Um, let's see. There's UCF, Florida Solar Energy Center has got hydrogen mm -hmm. research. I mean, that, it's common. It's it's not not a fringe thing. Uh, the other thing is for people who deny hydrogen is like the number of ga hydrogen gas stations in California at least is quite on the increase. But nobody hears it. I mean, do we hear about hydrogen cars these days? No, right? Uh, I heard like. I listened to a podcast once about it, but it was like it was talking about it as if it was like either super futuristic or just not doable. Yeah, well, it's like, um, different tools for different things. Electric cars make a whole lot of sense down in urban centers, where a heavy car with a short range is no big deal. But if you're going to drive across Nevada, uh, hydrogen's a way better way to go, or Australia for that matter. Yeah. Now there's also the the unpopular argument that the lithium ion batteries are they are so bad uh, from my viewpoint it's like it's really environmental disaster because um I, I mean that's my opinion on the uh, lithium ions they're good for like and of course i you know i a car that's on lithium ion or tesla is very sexy and all that um it's fun but i don't know like the the idea of um anything related to lithium ion that's going to be for future cars no that's i don't think it's really likely because lithium according to estimates has got like a 200 year supply uh, according to current usage and to recycle it is pretty hard and it's a pretty dirty technology you're talking about you know your countrysides in china being ripped up for the lithium elements and stuff like that um so i think if you read about the critique of lithium i mean you i think you'll find plenty that it's not a very clean technology if you look at the whole whole chain of events from from the <laughs> earth to d disposal um that's that's arguments but we don't we don't need to get into those we'll, we we want to say hey we want to do something that's completely clean uh and it's it could be a decentralizable technology so that this can be a uh, definitely there's potential here for distributing energy production and changing human history as we know it. So it's kind of exciting. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, think, uh, I think we'll get some people uh, on board. If we think about, if we think about who we're pitching this program to, what are they most concerned with? I think the technological feasibility, I mean, it's, it's, it's wonderful and it's good and it helps a lot to have all this research and have some ideas at the onset about what particular iterations of these technologies we want to incorporate into these projects. And maybe the process of discovering that it's something that these chapters can get started with. Absolutely. Um, I think one of the one of the things that we've got to, that we'll have to focus on in order to make the pitch to universities to forming these clubs is making a logistical and support pitch. You know, this is a program that you want to get involved with, and it's really educational. Because I mean, from a professor or a staff person standpoint, even if this project is not ultimately 
successful, the educational value, the experiential value to an engineering student is huge. Um, and so I'm, I, I see the feasibility of the technology, of course, but what we want to show is that we can organize the students and organize these clubs together, that we can create an infrastructure that makes the collaborative nature of this project possible. We want to show them that this isn't something that's going to produce a tremendous amount of administrative labor on college staff, kind of, you know, from that angle. And we want to show that this is something that's going to be really polished and engaging um, rather than something where students are going to spend most of their time figuring out just how to interface with this with this infrastructure we're building. Yeah, yeah. So it's really like it's almost like the business case for this, or kind of like the feasibility and practicality and all those those aspects. I think the as you say the education value. I do think we have extreme value that we can be pitching the the collaborative design part. Um, that mm -hmm. I think. Um, just like collaborative design for a transparent and inclusive economy of abundance. Another thing to think about too is with the designs for these items themselves, things like uh, I know AutoCAD files or whatever kind of design software you'll be working with, that stuff can all be shared right on the wiki. There could be live there could be live documents we could use Git for something like that. So there's version control, uh, which is a, a version control is something that we're absolutely going to need. Uh, but uh, the design aspects of this, you know, you could have students on opposite sides of the earth working on the exact same document together the same way we do. Um, so there's a lot of this stuff on the early stages of this project that require very, very little real infrastructure on the part of the school you know they're not going to need a lab they're not going to need construction equipment to build these parts yet we can start identifying how that works as the design aspect takes uh as a design aspect the design phase of the project is completed so if we create an opening pitch. How is this organized? How are people brought together? How do we communicate? What are the long-term goals of the project? And what can people get involved with right now? That what can we people get involved with right now is let's build out a plan and an infrastructure for working on the design, you know, and computer documents, working on the design aspects of uh, all of the early stage technologies, so to speak. You know, what are the most fundamental problems we need to solve uh, how are those problems solved? Okay, let's invite people to that process. This is stage one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, modular breakdown. So the, the yeah, do the industry standard of what we do, which is modular breakdown, um, allocating a number of tasks to a lot of different people. Because with a modular breakdown, you can, you know, like say, if, you know, you've got the car, um, you can s start breaking this down into wheels, frame. Mm -hmm. Um, you can start with that and then you can do you know break this down into many many parts then you go into so that's uh, I'll show another one so based on the extreme enterprise thing uh, event design So here's uh, working on uh, the house project here, but um, if you talk about the generic, I'm going to actually paste this this thing here. So there's certain specifications we follow. Uh, so this is this was for the uh, for the CD go home. Um, you can start with requirements. You can have products and product breakdown. Like the product strategy would be okay. Here's our car. Here's the subsystems of it. There's role architecture for how many different people, uh, what different people are needed to do different parts of the, the development. And then there's, now talking about enterprise, it's kind of like, it's kind of like, uh, we have to think about what, what that means, because what are you going to do for an enterprise of hydrogen cars? Well, that's a little bit way off, uh, but maybe there's some, some educational products or something else that that may come out or like the subsystems like for example we're developing an open source electric motor maybe that there's a case oh okay in this whole project we developed this 
competitive electric motor or something like that. So, so I think we should try to build in some of the enterprise into this, definitely. And then you've got technology modules and interfaces, um, and then we kind of loop around that and continue to iterate. But that's kind of like the high level, high level view of it for somewhat of a design process. Um, I'm going to just paste that in there from this other doc. Um, so, um, now, um, as far as what to do, uh, Joe, so what's, uh, what are you up to in the next week or two? Are you busy building uh, on the printer? Do you have any time for this or? I have time for this, yeah. The printer, I've made the printer in my evening bag. It's my, uh, my evening time relaxation uh, Star Trek and the 3D printer. <laughs> okay. So, so you guys, um, you know, talking about dividing roles, I can break down the tech into, into pieces. I could do that. I could start thinking about um, the pitch. What do we, um, let's see, how to divide labor here best? I feel like first step would be really good to get like a a really flushed out plan and schedule of like the whole process from like this meeting all the way up until the card being built and just like getting a flushed out process that we can just like follow all the way through where like could start with like what joe was talking about with just like college students maybe just designing the process and helping out like flush out the whole idea of the building before any type of building starts and, and then, then like leading on to like the building and you just go into depth kind of like that thing you were doing with the cars but you just keep breaking it down into every step is just like planned out for the colleges mm -hmm. um because uh i don't know just being around college environments too i realize like Students, if they're not, like, when they're joining clubs or, like, a project, if they're not kind of, like, given direction or told what they're doing, then it can just turn into, like, a complete mess, especially if it's collaborating amongst a ton of universities. So I think just having a plan and schedule mm -hmm. is smart. Well, and I, I think... Uh, I think one of the first steps to that, too, and that plan and schedule thing is solving a lot of other kind of fundamental questions about this. So if I if I think of, you know, what do I what can I do on this project in the next even just few days is put myself in the position of a university staff person, a professor or somebody in an engineering department and think about somebody approaching me asking me to get my school involved with this project. What are all of my questions going to be? Uh, how are we all going to communicate? Uh, how are these designs shared? What kinds of uh, how are decisions made throughout this organization? I mean, it's going to be doing uh, and a little bit more saying all that has to be worked out. So I think one of the things we should do for us Lost your job. Josh, you, we lost them, right? Yeah. Yeah, I can't hear them. Um, yep. Yeah. Um, the market. Yeah, he was getting a good point there. Like, yeah. Yeah. So, so basic pitch. Um, yeah, like pitch and logistics. Oh, I the first What's the step. Yeah. Um, schedule. Uh, any thoughts on schedule? So 12 months, 18 months from now, I would say. Um, pick a date, Josh. For the car to be built? Yep. 
we're gonna all we're gonna do year of work and then we're gonna all descend into one place to put it together with all the information that we have we'll make a minimum viable product on that that fine day um, it's like product demo day where we try to put everything we know together and it's a highly collaborative event of course before it is a lot of coordination between all the all the different yeah. chapters um, let's see can we pick a date um, I, I feel like it's pretty easy to pick a date if I were to just like quickly consider it, I'd probably say like two years it takes a while to like yeah. like reach out and establish a club because like you could yeah. get in contact with the professor but how is that professor going to yeah. find students okay. and like Excellent. Well, sounds like June 1st, 2022. Yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be really cool. Perfect. Our first annual convention, Earth yep. Day, would be another another uh, Earth Day would be a nice choice for something like this too. Oh yeah, like on a big day already. April well, the, putting it on Earth Day, putting it right on Earth Day makes a very strong statement about the why of this project you know what i mean this isn't yeah. we, this isn't this isn't a bunch of this isn't a bunch of guys getting together to try to send a little a little drone boat all the way down a river or something like this this is about solving a real problem uh can we okay move it um a month earlier to april 22 22 <laughs> 22 squared that's going to be the 22 squared campaign yeah Earth Day 2022. April 22, 2022. Yeah, that's good. Because it's also during like a, a school year. So yeah. I'm like, more okay. people can travel. Okay. Um, and April actually still has some spring breaks, doesn't it? For some people, but maybe not. Um, if it's. A lot of university yeah. people does that does that pose April twenty two pose a big challenge for logistics? I don't think so because usually that's that's generally in the middle of like the school like quarter or semester, so it's not like a lot of people take like a weekend trip or something like that to uh, to go do club stuff. And if they're on campus, hopefully in twenty twenty two, then. That'll be a cool event for people in clubs to go to. Okay. That sounds good. Perfect. Um, now, as far as how do we communicate, how do our design submitted and all that, I mean, we've got a lot of that stuff worked out for uh, from the OSC collaboration protocol. So maybe, um, so maybe on the first page, well... Well, or here. No, let's just continue it here. Plan and schedule. So for the some of the planning, I mean, there's um, take a look at OSC collaboration protocol for open source uh, projects. That's what that's what we do today. Uh, so, yeah, so a little, um, now I think we yeah. should, should, well, are we in a position to, we know we got to produce some of these assets, but, but as far as the marketing time, like what, Uh, say Josh, if you had some time to to work on this, what what would you be in a position to do? My suggestion would be, okay, at this time, so we're still we're going to the outreach now to universities and looking for all all open source related interests, topic related yeah. interests. Uh, so I would say f primarily open source. So anyone who's like collaboration or large scale collaboration or project management or product development. Um, interests, especially if they're related to open source and eco-ethical 
technologies and all of that. So it's yeah. the same, same process, same same kind of uh, audience, plus the specific subject matter, like there's electric motors, there's engines, there's CNC, there's rubber tires, rubber 3D printing, there's controls, there's like uh, computer vision, like what if this is an autonomous hydrogen solar PV car? Yeah. Um, I mean, we can talk, we can invite everybody, and then um, the systems that we try to make would still be, um, if we're moving forward on open source modular, then it's still relevant. Because I think a lot of times the, the open source part, um, I mean, okay, obviously there's a lot of like if you for example take a look at computer vision like is there an open source computer vision system that we can use right now that can drive an autonomous car well I don't think so uh, that's cutting-edge technology still but can we actually move that process forward like competing with Google and and Tesla or collaborating by competing by collaborating so we're saying that we're gonna try to align everybody and the process is the, the project is complex but maybe like maybe we could gain gain headway by by the radical collaboration aspect so we're saying it's like this is open this is for everybody and maybe we can even start showing hints that hey we're actually getting really good results that's the kind of thing we're we're trying to solve for um yeah i think uh yeah there's a lot to this whole project i think uh more more challenges will arise as we go, but I think we just need to, um, for now, I could either help out on the scheduling or just start looking into colleges and just looking into, like, specific professors we could reach out to who have, like, a history in open source research or, like, hydrogen research or anything related to this project. I'd say so. Uh, I mean, what else, what else... I mean, what you said is good. Like, if we can look into just basically getting a team, team together. Uh, yeah. Basically, here's, like, if you go also into this document here, uh, I'm gonna paste this because here, like in the house document, I put mm -hmm. a whole bunch of breakdown in there for role architecture, enterprise related. There's technical documentation, business plan, financial analysis, um, tooling, legal. Like for example, there's legal issues. Like what hap How do you get a, a hydrogen car on the roads? Uh, I don't yeah. know. You can you can possibly use that as a maybe some guideline. But I mean, a lot of things are under the sun. Uh, are included that are under the sun are included in a in a project like this because we're selecting the problem to be pretty large. Um, mm -hmm. But I think, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I would definitely suggest we can we can start looking at those people as far as who's who are the open source. A comprehensive list of here are all the people at universities that are interested in open source and related matter. Yeah, I think like, cause it's kind of like a top down approach where you can't explain it to every person in a club across all the universities that you want on this project. Yeah. But if you find like 10 representatives from 10 universities and then you fully explain it to them and they uh, can be a representative for you, then all you do is just tell them the information, they pass it on, and then it actually works. So yeah. I can start looking into that. I can start looking into like legal stuff. Just like, I don't know, honestly, email me whatever you want me to do and I'm willing to do it. So. Yeah, I'd say, uh, okay. I would say let's get the master list of like, uh, once we have a package more coherent or a simple invitation because we can also choose to invite um, like early on in the process we can choose to invite people saying hey we're doing this do you want to be actually collaborating on a, on a planning part say this person is in some project management or some management track or enterprise development or product development track and they might want to just get involved in this 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 part so we could be open in the process to involving others as they arise uh, and we can say yeah. we can invite them to the to the meeting so we can actually be building up this meeting into this posse of aligned people who are uh, who, who build momentum and how do we keep building momentum so that we don't get bored or flake off this 
well I think by starting with a large project I think there's a good chance of getting quite a bit of um, bit of interest uh, I think I don't know I think the topic is so big that I think we, we might instead of like uh, attrition we might be uh, just continuously building speed to this yeah 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 let's try it what I would like to do what I would like to do is uh, create a new page on wiki tonight please and I'm gonna fill it in as if it were a pitch page for yeah. this you know if I wanted to if I if Josh or I or you or if we're talking to somebody at one of these universities and they want to see this whole thing broken down in a concise and approachable format, something they could turn around and take to their dean and say, hey, I'd really like to do this. Here's all of the relevant, here's the elevator pitch. Uh, I'll open up a wiki document. Nice. And fill it in. And we lost him again. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And how do we communicate? So, I mean, you can see the notes. So on MJ log, you can see the notes to this meeting, like, like right here. I think mm -hmm. we're doing okay with the, the logs. I think that's good. So we can coordinate everyone. But basically, get everybody to. Everyone keeps a log. We can coordinate that way. And then there's the wiki. Um, let's just start. Um, so I'm gonna say. Uh, July 30th, 1st. This would be so much easier if right? not for the vagaries of technology. Yeah. <laughs> we need open source broadband so that we can get over this too. Yeah. Well, let's... Let's... Let's do it. <laughs> um, I'm going to paste this doc... Um, publish. I put this into today's notes, which are you know, I'll share my screen here one more time here. You guys know where to find the the log, dev log. Would you be able to find this page on the wiki? Yeah, dev log. Yeah, dev team log. Mm -hmm. I did this little trick right there. So yeah, today's document is on there. Um, so you can put the notes to that page. Let's see, dev log, right? Yeah, and then you get go to 2020 July. Mm -hmm. Yep. So we're right there. Uh, Joe, if you do that, so you can link to this, or you can just link to your log. Okay. We just got a uh, we just got another podcast acceptance. Oh, nice! nice. Hey. All right. From uh, from who? Let me see here. I have to look because they didn't reply right to my. Oh 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 oh! This was one of the guys I found when I was digging around. Uh, uh, knowledge without college podcast. It's all it's all about <laughs> technology, entrepreneurship, and uh, self education. Okay, oh, that's a good one. Okay, the guy today, uh, Francisco, was uh, we're talking about that a little bit too. Mm -hmm. Knowledge without college. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, hey, Marcin, I haven't been able to fill out my uh, hours on my blog. Uh, it says see. like it says I need CSRF verification failed. What? Okay, show your screen. Here I could go. Uh, 
Okay, it just worked for me. Show me your screen. What's going on? How do I show the screen? Go uh, uh, top middle. There's a share screen. Up here. You see that? Yeah. Yep. For so this is this. Oh wow. You just got some some blocking on your side happening. Yeah, I'm just put here. Like... Oh, but what about now? Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll go to here, and then I'll give me that. Huh? You are seeing a message. Let me. Um... You are seeing a message because the site requires CSRF cookie when submitting forms. This site. I might have like a plugin installed. That's a. Yeah, it just says you gotta enable cookies. I don't remember ever turning that off then. Hmm. Wow. That's weird. You put a. Do you have an exception in for this whole site for ad blocker? That might be. If you put an exception in for the whole for the whole wiki on ad blocker, tell it not even to turn itself on. It that might be that might be part of it. Yeah, but like I've had my app lock off, and that's how I usually use it. Oh, okay. And uh, I don't know. I I like updated the app lock, and ever since it's just been like I could. Let me see if I remove it. Let's see if this works. Mm. Oh. Interesting. Yeah. I might just have to log in on like another device and then log it there, which is doable. Okay. So, uh, so let's do the following. So let's let's start getting a master list. Uh, so like you started the podcast list. Do one. That's so you got the university. Yeah, basically name, university topics that they research on. Just starting with mm -hmm. three columns. So you got whoever that is link email if you can find or maybe probably contact info like if, if the people are good like yeah we should be able to get their email info as a candidate we can follow up whenever we get a chance uh, which would um, Josh do you think you have enough to go on with that or just looking at and this could be worldwide. Yeah. It could be anywhere. I'd say. Uh, hang on. I have some. Uh, I have quite a few friends in higher education. I could just reach out to them for straight up organic uh, networking. Mm -hmm. You know, hey, do you have a friend over in the engineering department? Hey, do you know anybody who's interested in this kind of stuff up at your college? Hey, who should I talk to if I wanted to find out about this? Yep. Um, I may, I may see if one of those guys can. Uh, well, we'll see. We'll see. I'll talk to my, I'll talk to my higher ed folks and see what what I can dig up. Mhm. Mm yep. Okay, uh, I gotta go. Okay. I gotta go to, like, yep. work on some other college stuff, but, uh, yep. yep. Yeah, we'll keep in touch and meet back up next Friday. Yep, so same time next Friday, let's do it. Thanks, Josh. Sure. Keep going. Okay, see you more soon. See you, yep. Joe. Bye -bye. Joe, you good for now, or what else we got? Oh, yeah, I so. I wanted to show you the next for. Yeah. Uh, this right here that you have pre built shows a plate that goes all the way to the edges. Yep. And there's not there's not a similar plate for this guy in the kit. Does this use one of the shorter ones that doesn't cover the whole face, or is there supposed to be another one of these? They're the same parts, right? Yeah, but the only this little cover plate that was already bolted down goes all the way to the edges of this piece, and the only ones that are in the kit are the short ones that only cover. That's okay. Good. Okay. Oh, so you don't need need that piece then. 
Yeah, no, that's I what I wanted off. to make sure before you... Yeah, no, I cut them off because you don't really need to go all the way to the edge. You, all you need to do is hold the bearings in. Okay. Perfect. All right, yeah, I just wasn't sure. That's I just wanted to make before. It's so when you were talking about putting something in the mail. It's like, ah, let me let me make sure I'm not mistaken before we go burn no, any resources fixing something. That's good. That's good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, in that case, uh, in that case, then I'm good to go. Okay. Good to go. So you'll you'll start a wiki page. We'll go over that. Uh, we'll continue on this for next Friday. Yeah. One other uh, one other question, actually. Who yep. does our Who does our Twitter account? I do. Okay. There are uh, a lot of good podcasts on the list that prefer to be. They want you to get in touch with them on Twitter. Okay. Um, so I didn't know if that's something you wanted to share access to, so Josh and I could work on that while we build up this university thing, or if that's just something where you want me to pull them out, put them together, and forward them to you. Uh, no, you can you can do it. Um, I can get you get you on there on the okay on the Twitter. So we'll go into our account. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I can do that. Okay. I'll I'll set set you up to it. So you, um, so you saying you want to contact them as OSE? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I, I figured I figured it would be a lot easier to use the Twitter account yeah. that's already got the history rather than sparking up something new. That's it. That sounds good. So I'm gonna add you to it. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Then uh, then we're set. Okay. Uh, sounds good then. So yeah, we'll talk then um, through the week and Friday. All right. Thanks, Carson. Thanks, Joe. Bye-bye.